The mindset in the rental car game that most people make mistakes on is they think that we got to target everybody. Do y'all think that I want to rent my cars to everybody? Do y'all think I want to rent my houses to everybody and just anybody? Yes or no? I need full participation on this live. This is about to be a master class. Do y'all think that I want to rent my cars out to everybody? Let me ask y'all that question first. I got to see if I got some real intelligent folks on the live right now. No, I do not want to rent my cars out to everybody. Why? Because look, people get mad at me all the time. I'm telling y'all, people be DM and push man, Mitch. Hey, Mitch, I need this type of car. I need type of, this type of car. I'd be like, no. The reason why is because I do not cater to everybody with my particular niche. Everybody think niche it down. Niche it down. You have to niche it down. Somebody said, I got 10K ready for game. Go ahead and shoot me a DM. But either way, I want you to niche it down. All right? What does that mean, Mitch? I don't know what that means to niche it down. You can do so many different niches, but I don't want you to do every niche. Simply put, you can make a rental car game. You can make the rental car model to say, I'm going to only go after Uber and Lyft drivers. Listen to me. My model, my business was made to assist Uber and Lyft drivers who don't have their own car, who don't have cash, who don't have credit, but they have enough to get through the week and be able to use a car to bring in income for their family. Does that make sense? So you are niching it down. So I'm only targeting Uber and Lyft drivers. If you call me and say, yo, I want to take my girl out of town to Tennessee. Oh, Mitch, I want to I want to see if I can rent a car to go to the prom. I want to I want to rent a car to go here. I'm going to say, no, I don't have that car. I don't have that. I only have cars for Uber and Lyft drivers who are trying to make money for their family who don't have credit, who don't have cash. And they need a car that has high, is a high mileage vehicle that they can go out there and do Uber and Lyft with. Same thing if I want to do a niche like this. My niche is. I want to only rent cars out to DoorDashers. I only want to do with people who deliver Instacart, DoorDash, or Uber Eats. That's my niche. Are y'all getting what I'm trying to tell y'all? You got to make sure you niche down your business. The reason why y'all have y'all don't have any customers is because y'all are going for every customer. Y'all think y'all can pass cards out freely to just anybody and everyone, and you're trying to target uh, Margaret, James, Samuel, all of these people, and they have different walks of life. I don't want those. I don't want those people. Those are not my target demographic. Everybody comment, not my target. That is not my target. I don't want them. I only want Instacart, DoorDash, Uber Eats. That's the only people I want. Why are those customers better when you niche it down? Listen, why are those customers Better when you niche it down because you know exactly what they are using the car for. You know exactly what type of issues they're going to run into. You know exactly what hurdles they'll have. You'll know exactly what successes, what failures they might have. So you'll be able to plan your whole business model around door dashers and Instacart drivers. Y'all got to think about it. It's a lot easier. And when you're trying to close somebody and get them to sign a contract on a 30 day booking for your car, right? You are trying to close them. You know everything that they'll be worried about. You know everything that they might be concerned. Y'all ever go to a website and y'all see the frequently asked questions? Anytime somebody comes to talk to me, I already have a list of the frequently asked questions up because I know my niche. I am totally niche down to where when somebody calls me with a concern, oh, you're worried about being able to drive on multiple platforms? Don't worry about it. I, I make sure that you can drive on Instacart, DoorDash, Uber, and Lyft because you don't have to only drive with one platform with my program. If you go through Hertz or you go through Enterprise and you go through Uber or Lyft, they make it so you only can drive on one platform. You can't, if you go to go get a, if you go through Uber, and you say, look, I want to get a rental car through Uber and they use Enterprise. Soon as they say that, they're letting you know that you only can drive for Enterprise. Clearly, my business is better because you can drive for Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and Instacart. You can do it on all those platforms. Also, you only have 300 access miles. 
You only have 300 access miles. What does that mean, Mitch? I don't know what access miles mean. If you are not driving on the Uber platform, you can only drive 300 miles on your own time. So if you want to go to get a burger, if you want to go take your girl out in that car, if you want to go out on a date, all of that stuff, you have 300 mile limit before you start getting charged even more. Me, I give you unlimited miles. So this is why my program is better. And this is why it's so great to niche it down because every customer I talk to, they are going to know exactly what they are going to get and why I'm better. And I can say it and it's going to roll off the tongue really easily. Why? It's going to roll off the tongue real smooth and easy because I talk about it every day to every customer that I deal with. That's why it's so important to niche it down. Another factor, I don't charge deposits on my economy cars. You're going to go to, char go to Uber, you're going to go to Lyft, you're going to go to Enterprise, you're going to go to Hertz, you're going to go to Budget Car, and every time you go to get a car, they are going to make you pay a deposit. You will not have to pay a deposit with me. That is something that I have as a perk with my program. I niched it down. Same thing goes for insurance. I get my insurance com coverage through my commercial insurance policy. You do not have to pay for insurance. Everything is included in my weekly rate. So you are going to pay a lot less literally using my cars than if you use Uber cars or Lyft cars. Does that make sense? So this is why you have to niche it all the way down. If you don't niche it all the way down, then you guys are going to be targeting people from whole different walks of life and you are not going to be able to close as many people as I close. And that is the name of the game. So you guys have to understand that you don't want to go for everybody. You got to niche it down. So that's what I want you to do today. Today's homework is to find your niche in the rental car space or find your niche in the STR space, which is Airbnb, VRBO, Gigster, Peer Space, Spacer. I want you to find your niche. Are you targeting people that you want to have to take to prom? Do you want to have the, the, the wedding service? A lot of people do it like this as well. Some people have an all-white fleet of rental cars. All their cars are white. And the only people they target are people who are getting, going through weddings. And they want cars for their send-off. They got the send-off cars. So they got the Rolls Royce, all white. They got the G-Wagon, all white. They got um, all-white Wraith. They got all-white Lamborghini. Everything is for them to cater to people who are getting married. And they need a car to get sent off. They are not going to be... Hitting up little baby talking about you need a car for your rap video. They're not going to be talking to movie sets talking about do you need a new car to sit on your, the set of um, Fast 6. You want to niche it down so smooth that I do weddings. I do photo shoots, video shoots for only people who are doing non-driven rentals. It can be that specific and you'll make more money that way than trying to get everybody because your messaging and your advertisements and your marketing is so straightforward that you are targeting your perfect customer. Okay. You are targeting your perfect customer. So you're not, you don't have to answer that many questions. When somebody comes to your DMS or they respond to one of your ads or they respond to your website, they are coming for a specific reason because you did specific targeting down to your niche. This is high level game. If I'm giving you high level game right now, drop flames in the chat. I can understand why the numbers are dropping on our live because when you give high level game, you're speaking on a frequency of people who normally don't start things and complete things. They can't relate to it. So it's disrupting their frequency. So everybody who's getting game from this, drop a flame in the chat. I want to make sure I'm helping y'all level up today. I got up today. It's early in the morning. I said, you know what? I want to show them some high level swag. I don't know why. I just felt like I need to get up and just teach y'all some game today because I can see a lot of people that were doing the rental car game aren't doing it no more. Meanwhile, I'm going on nine years in the game. Meanwhile, I'm still profitable. Meanwhile, my mentees are still profitable. Meanwhile, we're still going on Facebook Marketplace and literally getting 100 leads a day because you guys don't know that information. So I want to get I want to let you know how profitable this business can be if you niche it down. The problem that y'all be trying to do Y'all be trying to make it yourself. Y'all be trying to do it your own way. When you do it your own way, you get the results that you've always gotten. I want y'all to think about it like that. When you do it your own way, you get the results that you have always gotten. Okay? And a lot of y'all don't understand that you are handicapping yourself by trying to do it your own way and you haven't ever achieved success in a particular field of business. This means that you are literally self-taught. Self-taught millionaires don't exist. Every millionaire that I know, they have a mentor or they've been educated in some way 
in some fashion on how to do it the right way, following a pattern, following a blueprint. When you follow a GPS, look, I want y'all to think about it like this. When you don't have an address and a GPS, how easy is it to get to the destination? I want y'all to answer that question. When you don't have an address and a GPS, how easy is it to get to that destination? It's very hard. You don't know where to go. You're just like, yo, I'm going to just keep going north. I think I can get there if I, if I get lucky. I'm going to try to go down this street right here. It look like it's smooth. But when you got an address and a GPS, you got turn by turn directions. So this is what I want y'all to sh I want y'all to see how simple the game can be if you just get educated on it. So now I just gave y'all a game that you couldn't Google, but I'm going to continue. So here we go. If y'all want to learn some more, everybody drop a one in the chat. Drop a one in the chat if y'all want to learn some more. Because I want to, I want to, if it's only, if it's one person on here that wants to learn, I want to teach that one person. I already know that I got to speak to 100% of y'all just to find a 5% of y'all that's going to actually do this stuff. So now, drop a one in the chat if you want to learn some more. I'm going to teach y'all some more right now. Yep, yep. Okay, cool. So we got one, one, and that was good enough for me. So right now, I'm going to be coaching specifically... Uh, Ronaldo Moses. Ronaldo Moses, I'm about to educate you on a rental car game at a high level. So now that you already know how to niche it down, right? You know that you want to find out exactly what your niche is when you're making your rental car business. So we're going to just act as if you are catering to DoorDashers. Your model is you want DoorDash, Instacart, delivery drivers to be in your economy vehicles. You are going to get vehicles. It doesn't look. Let me ask y'all a question. What, what, what year do you have to have of a vehicle in order to deliver groceries for DoorDash or Instacart? I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to fuck y'all mind up. What year vehicle do you need to have to be able to deliver groceries for Instacart, DoorDash, or Uber Eats? What's the year, what's the year you need? Watch this. I'm about to fuck y'all up real quick. It's going to kill y'all because y'all not educated. I'm trying to tell y'all something right now. Somebody said 2010, 2007, 2005. Watch this. Watch this right here. Watch this. Listen, you can deliver groceries in the old school. You can deliver groceries in the 63 Lincoln Continental. You can deliver DoorDash, Instacart in the motherfucking 64 Impala. It doesn't matter the year. So imagine this. If I said, you know what? I'm going to make my niche to be, I'm about to fuck y'all up. I'm about to make my niche to be rental car business for DoorDashers, Instacart, Uber Eats only, right? So now, every, every car that I buy, it can be a 2009, it can be a 2001, it can be a 2007. So I can take my happy ass on Facebook Marketplace, right? And I can go buy these cars for $900, $1,500, $2,000, that work. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm about to teach y'all something. Y'all not listening. I can go on, I can go on Facebook Marketplace and I can grab them cars for 900, 1500, 2000. And when I do my marketing and advertisement to DoorDashers and Instacart, all I'm doing is saying, listen, I got a car. <laughs> I got a car that you can drive unlimited miles and deliver groceries with. I my business is modeled around Instacart drivers, DoorDashers. You feel me? So now all of these people are coming to get a car for me to do DoorDash. They don't have a car, but they have a driver's license. They got a good background check. Everything's smooth. So I'm going to put insurance on this $900 car. I'm going to put insurance on this $1,500 car, and I'm going to let that person pay me $200 a week. $200 a week. You know that DoorDashers and Instacart drivers and Uber Eats drivers can make $200 in one day. I'm going to charge $250 a week. That's $1,000 a month. I paid $900 for the car. So after one month, that car was free to me. Listen, after one month, that car was free to me. So now I don't have any debt in that car. So now that person keeps the car for months and months and months. Now, let's just say that, that car, he keeps that car for 12 months. I done made $12,000. We're going to take away the month that I had to get my money back. I got $11,000 profit from a free vehicle because it's been paid off in cash. I'm gonna say it again. I got $11,000 from a car that I paid $900 for. I paid cash for it. And the person who's driving it is doing DoorDash. 
Instacart. They are making money from having the car. It doesn't matter the year, make, and model. You see how creative you can get when you niche down your market? Now imagine if I get 10 cars doing the same exact thing for just $200 a week. I got 10 cars paying me $200 a week that go out for 12 months. How much money am I making? Let me see my mathematicians. If y'all don't think that there are cars like that on Facebook Marketplace, I challenge you to leave from this live. I already gave you homework. Homework number one, niche down your rental car business. Second homework is go on Facebook Marketplace and see if you can find cars from $900 to $2,000. Go ahead and see if you can find cars from $900 to $2,000. Then you look up. Then you look up. And you over here making a lot of bankroll. Somebody said $120,000. That's 20K a month, right? Somebody said Atlanta has the cheapest car. But what I want y'all to realize is that you guys can do it. Remember what I said at the beginning of this live? At the beginning of this live, I told you guys. You can do it. The problem is y'all don't get educated on this stuff. Y'all are anti-education. But people like myself know the game so good that I don't care what market it is. I don't care if it's a recession. I'm still going to get my cars off to my door dashers who need to make money in the recession. Instacart drivers who need to make money in the recession. I know the game. I am very good at the game. The problem y'all are having is y'all don't want to get educated on it. So now I'm going to continue teaching because remember my one person said he wanted to get more information. So I didn't taught y'all that you can do it. I didn't taught y'all that you have to niche it down. I didn't taught y'all how you can find the cars and a blueprint and a strategy that you can use right now in 2023 and make up to $10,000 a month or more. And it ain't, it's not that it's difficult. It's not that it's easy either. It's just simple. It's just simple. Okay, everybody say keep it simple. Everybody comment that. Keep it simple. Comment to keep it simple real quick. I'm going to put y'all in the game. Don't worry about it. I'm going to put y'all in the game. This is why I get paid the big bucks. I'm telling y'all. I'm about to show y'all right now. This is why I get paid the big bucks. Everybody say keep it simple. Billionaires, multimillionaires, they don't try to make it complex. They don't try to make the strategy super duper crazy. They try to keep it simple. If you can learn how to keep it simple, it's just like the fundamentals of basketball. When you go and watch basketball players, if they just lay it up off the square on the top of the backboard, go, it goes inside of the rim and you get two points. You also can do like Vince Carter and do a 360 windmill dunk. It's a lot, it's a lot more difficult to make that 360 windmill dunk, but it's just two points. So do I need to do a 360 windmill dunk or should I just do a layup? Fundamental, same layup over and over again. Keeping it simple. Just keep laying it up off the backboard. If you keep laying it up off the backboard, you're going to keep making two points over and over. You're going to get the two, the four, the six, the eight, the 10, the 12, the 14, the 16, the 18, the 20. But y'all want to make it super duper difficult. Let me tell you a few ways y'all try to make it difficult on yourselves. Y'all say, I'm going to get a little bit of gain off YouTube, and then I'm going to try to do it myself. That's a 360 windmill. You've never found success in this thing before. You've never ran the strategy to completion before. You've never got education beyond free information. Therefore, you don't know the tangibles. So you are trying to do a 360 windmill dunk. You're trying to throw it through your legs and then dunk it with emphasis. And Pushman Mitch is just over here doing layups. People be trying to tell me, look, I seen this dude, he got this course, he telling y'all how to get Lambos, he telling y'all how to get Sprinters, and he going all crazy, right? I'm telling y'all how to do the same old layup. When Look, when it gets slow, when it's slow season, it's still DoorDashers, it's still Instacart drivers. When it's slow season, it's still Uber drivers. It's still Lyft drivers. When it's slow season, it's still Amazon Prime drivers. I don't have to worry about it. Every day I sit up in my high rise and I order DoorDash. I order Uber Eats every day. And the same thing happens because every time I go down to my lobby to check my mailbox, I see a DoorDasher, a Uber driver, an Instacart driver going upstairs to deliver food every single day. 
It don't matter if it's rain, hail, sleet, snow. They are out here trapping these deliveries. So if that's the case, they are going to need vehicles because people are making money doing this. They are being paid to do it. They're not doing it for free. They're not delivering your groceries for free. Therefore, if they can make money doing it, I have a position that I can fill a void for people who want to deliver and make money. Somebody said Uber Eats drivers aren't driving Lambos, though. Has nothing to do with anything that I just said. You need to pay attention in class. You probably were sitting in the back. Move on to the front. Move on to the front of the class so you can hear everything that I'm talking about. I need y'all to be at the front with your glasses on so you don't miss the points. Otherwise, you are here for literally no reason. Okay, so I'm going to explain this again. You need to niche down your business now so that you can have longevity in the business. You know what I'm saying? You need to niche down your business so you can have longevity. So... When it comes to the everyday person, I want the everyday person to be my customer, right? And that's what I coach on. That's what I teach you guys on. If you guys follow the strategies that I teach, you literally can make money overnight. But if you follow the strategies that you teach yourself, you will be doing a 360 windmill dunk and you will be missing a lot of those dunker tips. I want y'all, for those who don't understand the basketball analogy, I want y'all to go and go on YouTube and say 360 windmill dunk. And I want y'all to see how many times people got to try to make this dunk before they make it. It's not easy to do. But then I want y'all to look up fundamental layup and see how they you can make a thousand of those in a row. If you don't know basketball, they put a square in the middle of the basketball backboard. Just so you could throw it at the top of that square. And if you hit the top of that square, it's damn near guaranteed that that ball is going to go in the hoop. I can go do a video today. And I can sit here and throw layups off the backboard all day and I will make it 100%. I can make a thousand in a row, but you go tell somebody to do a thousand 360 windmill dunks in a row and you will never see that done. That's what I'm trying to explain. We got to keep it simple so we can be able to make the big bucks. I know it's not glamorous, y'all. I know y'all want to be like Pushman Mitchell had a Rolls Royces and a Lamborghinis. The ways I got to the Rolls Royces and the Lamborghinis is I took my time to strategically, listen, I took my time to strategically do the fundamentals for years. I'm going on year nine, okay? Strategically. Why do you think I see so many people coming into business and leaving the business? I don't, I, I'm not leaving the rental car business, dog. I'm sorry. I'm not leaving it. I'm going to continue to do it because it's the fundamentals. They are so easy to lay it up off the backboard. I got to keep getting my two points. I got to keep getting my two points. Y'all don't want the two points because it's not glamorous. You can't say you're in a Ferrari. But while I got this car going out to an Uber and, and DoorDasher or a Lyft driver, I'm collecting my two points every single week. Slow season, fast season, medium season, big season, small season. I'm collecting my two points. You only collecting two points when you get lucky. I don't want I don't want to do no lucky stuff. I want to put myself in a position to have luck around me in uh, infinity, freedom, abundance. This is what we need to do. So I gave you guys a very solid brief blueprint, one blueprint out of many that I have. I'm going to tell y'all something. I got some very special things coming up that are very beneficial to you. That are very beneficial to you. Two things are happening. November 27th in Atlanta at my crib. Cheapest mastermind I ever done. It's for my birthday. $350. Dirt cheap for you to learn from me in person. I encourage everybody here to DM me 350 if you want to pull up to the A to my private mansion and learn the game from me firsthand. Second thing. I have a Black Friday sale that's going to be something crazy. If you are interested in the Black Friday sale, all you got to do is comment Friday on this live. I bundled up. I'm going to just tell y'all because y'all rock with me for this whole live. I'm going to just tell y'all what we're doing on Black Friday. On Black Friday, I bundled up my deluxe course. I bundled up my deluxe Airbnb. And I, I bundled up my challenges that I did that are literally invaluable. Five-day challenges. I packaged them up and I put it into a bundle for less than $300. So if you wanna tap in on that, I got a wait list for everybody. You can get on a wait list. I'm only selling this thing to 50 people. Listen to this. 
And I want y'all to be aware because I don't want nobody to be sending me no angry messages. Like, oh, Mitch, I wasn't able to get it. I'm only selling it to 50 people. And if you spell Friday wrong, you won't get the link. I'm trying to get y'all on a wait list so you can be one of the first 50 people to get this huge bundle for less than $300. If you don't know, my deluxe rental car course is $1,500. If you don't know, my deluxe Airbnb course is $1,500 and it hasn't been no sales. And if you don't know my challenges, I don't sell them publicly. You cannot buy my five-day challenges. They're not for sale anywhere. So I'm bundling all that together. If you get on a wait list, all you got to do is comment Friday to get on a wait list. And I will let y'all get access to it. The first 50 people who literally purchase it, y'all can get access to that bundle for less than $300. If you are after that, it will not sell. It will not sell. I promise you, the link will stop working. So make sure you are up at midnight when it drops and you grab that bundle. Why? Because it has all the strategies like I just taught you right here on this live. So you can be able to niche down your rental car business and then you can be a competitor of mine. I would rather everybody on this live who rocks with me. People tell me all the time, y'all. People tell me, push man Mitch, why are you telling people all they can be millionaires? Everybody can't be a millionaire. Is everybody in the world following me? Is everybody in the world on this live? You got 90 people. There is 1,700 millionaires being made every single day. Why can't these 90 people be one of them? I'm not talking to everybody. Everybody is not following Pushman Mitch. Everybody don't rock with Pushman Mitch campaign. You're right. Everybody can't be a millionaire. But all the people who rock with me and follow my tutelage, they possibly can be because exposure equals expansion. And I'm trying to expose y'all to ways where y'all can make money fluently. Y'all can speak it like people are buying label and they can speak Spanish fluently. I want y'all to realize that it's just keeping it simple. The problem y'all have is not that y'all not smart enough, not that y'all not intelligent enough to do these plays, not that y'all not intelligent enough to make money like me. Y'all just are trying to make it complicated. Y'all are trying to do 360 windmills when all you got to do is do layups, bro. It's simple. Keep it simple and just do the layup. Lay it up off the backboard. We call that fundamentals. How many people feel like they need to learn more fundamentals? Just drop a one in the chat. If you feel like you need to learn more fundamentals and you want to learn, listen, if I can get you to make a thousand a month, I know for a fact I can get you to make 10,000. That's a simple, that's a simple, uh, that's a simple scale. If I can get you to make $1,000 in a month, I can get you to make 10,000. The problem is y'all want to do 360 windmills when you need to be doing layups. Everybody want to be LeBron. Listen to me. What LeBron is doing is abnormal. He is an anomaly. He is a freak of nature. Y'all you, you get what I'm saying? D does everybody understand that LeBron James is like 39 years old and he's still dunking from the free throw line? He is a freak of nature. Everybody want to be LeBron. But some of y'all, y'all got to be the regular role player. Some people got to be Steve Kerr who just lays it up fundamental. So shoots it off the backboard. You want to be, you got to just be able to do the fundamentals, man. Lay it up off the backboard. And if you do enough fundamentals and you lay it up off the backboard and you get consistent enough, you will be able to have whatever you want. You will be able to have the pick of the litter because you are disciplined. The disciplined ones are the ones who are rewarded. One of my mentors told me this. One of my mentors told me this and it stuck with me forever. People who want to do whatever they want right? People who do whatever they want are never able to do what they want. I'm going to say that again. People who do whatever they want, they are never able to do what they want. And let me explain that. You talking about people like Kobe Bryant. He has millions of dollars. He can do whatever he wants. He can go to the club. He can go travel the world. He can go drink. He can go smoke, right? You're talking about Michael Jordan, he's a billionaire. He can do whatever he wants, but he doesn't do whatever he wants. He's disciplined. He says, look, I got to work on my craft. I got to be in the gym at three in the morning. I got to put up more shots than everybody else. I got to out-compete. I can't be drinking. I can't be smoking. I can't be hanging out late. I got to be disciplined to my craft. So they're not doing whatever they want. They have to sacrifice things like experiences. People like, yo, you want to go to this party? No, nah, I can't go to this party because I got to be disciplined. 
So the people who just say, well, I can do whatever I want. They never last long. They never last long. They never are being, they're never able to get to being able to get the pinnacle status because the disciplined ones are the ones that are rewarded. The ones who actually do whatever they want, they don't do whatever they want. It's, it's a crazy analogy, but you got to understand to understand. Just like somebody said, Kobe passed, but I get it. Makes no sense to even say that out loud. Pointless. Doesn't do anything for the conversation. So either way, I want y'all to really be able to focus on what your goals are. I want y'all to be disciplined and you're going to have to sacrifice those. Oh, I got to go to the club. Oh, I need to drink this bottle. I need to smoke. I need to go to this party. I need to do some. You need to, until you are wealthy, until you are successful, having seven figures in a bank account, you want to really think about this doesn't serve my purpose. I'm going to go without that. I need to have a strategy. I need to be able to be disciplined. And that's going to be the ones who get rewarded. So again, anybody, I was talking about Kobe and present tense, how Kobe's passed away years ago. Anyway, so this is what I want y'all to do. Everybody who's watching this live, who's hearing the, the words come out of my mouth, everybody comment Friday, Rick, man. Everybody comment Friday so I can get y'all on the wait list. Everybody comment Friday so I can get y'all on the wait list. Let's go. I don't want y'all to miss the opportunity. And again, if y'all want to come learn from me in person, if y'all if y'all if y'all want to come learn from me in person, November 27th, my birthday, I'm having a mastermind, very low ticket. You are all invited until I get to 30 people and I'm stopping it. It's going to be pure luxury, exclusive room, business attire only. I want y'all to get y'all money up, not y'all funny up. I'm going to be doing a giveaway there and I hope to see everybody who is here, who's serious about their goals, be in the room. So with that being said, comment Friday, get on the wait list. If you didn't get the link, because automatically, if you comment the word Friday, Automatically, if you comment the word Friday, it's going to go to your DM. But if you somehow don't get the wait list, right? If you don't get the wait list, just, just DM me and say you didn't get it. And I'll make sure that you get everything. What will be covering the in-person event? It's just going to be high level STR game, rental car game. And I'm going to throw in a couple surprises. So I got somebody coming to teach AI and show you all a couple different things as well. That's going to help you with your businesses. It's just high level brand development. If you ever been to any of my masterminds, you know that I over deliver. So I'm just going to under promise it. It's going to be a lot of game. It's only $350, but I'm going to make you feel like you paid thirty five thousand dollars. And that's the that's what I that's what I always try to do with my masterminds. People normally pay me five thousand dollars. Right. So what I do is I want you to feel like you pay fifty thousand and I want you to mentally come like you pay fifty thousand, because if you did, you're going to want to get way more out of it than you normally would. If you come to a free event, you're not going to go looking for a reason to get your return on investment. You're not going to go there trying to go hard. You're going to go there like, well, if I learn something, I learn something. If I don't, I don't. You don't really care. But I want y'all to feel like anytime you listen to one of my online courses, if you come to my mastermind, if you come to my conference, you come to my mentorship, I want you to feel like you paid $50,000 for it because you're going to execute way more than a person who came here for free. This is just a reality because anything that's free to you is not valuable. Don't, don't worry about me. To you, it's not even valuable. When somebody say, look, here go a, a book. I just bought it for you. It's free. You're not going to value it the same as if you paid for it. The same thing goes with anything. You, anytime somebody's giving you free information, they don't have an obligation to elaborate. Does that make sense? I don't have to elaborate and go in on any strategies on this live. I can choose to talk about whatever I want to talk about. Now, if you pay me $50,000 and you want to know something specific, of course, I'm going to sit there and break it down and talk to you about it. I'm going to elaborate on it. I'm going to show you everything because you paid me. But when it's free, I don't have to elaborate. I don't have to. So I want you all to understand the difference in the mindset going in. So anything that you do, I want y'all to pretend like y'all at least pay 50 to 100K and you got to get your return on investment. I need my ROI. And everything that you purchase from this day forward, today should be your accountability date. Anything that you purchase, I don't care if you're purchasing a drink, I don't care if you get in a hotel, I don't care if whatever you're getting, anything that you buy, you need to get a return on investment. So it needs to make sense for what you want in the future. Poor people think day to day, middle class people think month to month, Rich people think year to year. Real rich people think decade to decade. So you need to change your mindset to the year to year or the decade to decade. Like what you do today is going to influence your next year. 
What you did last year is why you're here today. I want you to really think about it. Everything, everything that you're doing right now is a result of your last year's thoughts and decisions. Everything you're going to be doing next year is all going to be what you think and do today. So what are you doing? Are you doing something that your next year self is going to say, thank you so much for doing that. I'm so glad you did that. I'm so glad you started doing that from that point on. Or are you going to be like, damn, I'm mad as shit I ain't start doing that. Now I'm right here in the same exact place with the same exact amount of money in the bank account, the same amount of assets, the same amount of stocks, portfolio. I got the same everything I had last year, and that's not a good thing. So I want you to realize that this is how you got to attack life. Everything needs to have a return on a return on income. Bro, you're a lifesaver. Appreciate that. Everything that you do should have a return on investment. So if I go buy a stick of gum, I need to like, yo, I bought this gum. This is going to make me this much money. If it ain't making me no money, I'm not buying it. I'm just being serious. That goes down to the food choices you eat, the places you hang out at, the hotels you stay in, the planes you take, the Ubers you take. You got to have an ROI. Everything has to have a return on investment. The reason why I ride an Uber Blacks is not because they're the most expensive Ubers. It's because they wait for me longer. They give me more time to get into the car. They have a charger. It's always a nice vehicle that's big enough for my 6'5 stuff to sit in, so I'm going to be more comfortable. This is a return on investment. I'm, I'm going to have a more pleasurable ride and drop-off experience if I take an Uber Black versus if I take a regular Uber X and get in the back of a small-ass Prius and my knees is in the back of the damn chair and I feel uncomfortable. This is going to make me grumpy. This is going to make me less... Like my value is going to decrease. I'm not going to work as hard because I'm uncomfortable. Now I'm going to be agitated. Now people who encounter me are going to have a bad conversation with me because I'm not feeling comfortable. That's how serious everything you do needs to be. I go first class because I know that I'm going to get a better experience with the, uh, the flight. I already know that I'm going to be able to eat when I'm on a plane. I'm going to be able to get as many drinks as I want, as many snacks as I want. I'm going to be able to recline my seat. I'm going to be able to have good Wi-Fi because I'm in the front. And I know that if I'm in the back and I'm missing all my calls, I'm in economy class, I know that my Wi-Fi is going to be slow. I know that I'm not going to be able to get text messages through. I know that I'm going to be able to miss meetings. I know that it's not a good return on investment. So I'm getting a better return on investment flying first class than flying economy class. And some of y'all don't think that way. Thanks, babe. Some of y'all don't think that way because you are, in a, you are in a situation that you don't think year to year. You don't think long term. You think today. Oh my God, it's going to be a lot cheaper on my pockets today. It's going to be a lot less expensive. A lot of people talk to me like this. I like, so I'm going to explain. I open up once a year. I open up my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. If you don't know about my mentorship programs, I normally mentor people in groups and it's, it's more beneficial that way, especially for beginner entrepreneurs. I, I mentor people in big groups, right? Because you're going to be able to learn from his experience in New York. You're going to be able to learn from his experience in LA, his, his trials, his errors. He'll ask questions that you never would have thought to ask, and you'll be exposed to those answers that you never would have thought of. So I normally do a group, but for my big mentees, I do one-on-one -on -one mentorship, right? I open up that once a year. People always hit me up asking me about mentorship, right? And they ask how much does it cost, right? As soon as they start asking me how much does it cost, the, the immediate response I'm going to say is how much will it cost you if you don't go? How much is it going to cost you if you don't go? How much more money are you going to spend if you don't come and learn it the right way? I want y'all to think about it like this. When I got into the rental car game, I had cars stolen. I didn't have a mentor. So the car got stolen. I didn't know what to do. So now I got a car stolen. I had no tracker in it. If I would have already invested in a mentor and I would have learned about the trackers, I would have knew exactly where my car was. I would have been able to find it. I would have been able to stop the theft. That would have saved me a lot of money. Me losing that car, uh, since it was being rented out and I had it on a personal policy and I didn't have a mentor to tell me I had a commercial policy, I had to pay for that car for six years. I had to pay for a car for six years that was stolen six years ago. So how much did that cost me? How much? It was an Audi A7. I had to pay on an Audi A7 for years. And I don't have no car to show for it. Reported it stolen. Said it was on a rental. I wasn't educated enough not to say that when I do a police report. And guess what? I've been paying for the, it was paying for the car for six years. How much will it cost you if you don't go? Doesn't matter how much the price is. And you got to think about it like this. People don't realize that they say stuff like this when, they, when they're talking to me. 
oh man, I don't know if I can afford that. So if you only do things that you can afford, I want, I want y'all to answer this question for me honestly. Everybody watching this live, everybody that's hearing my voice, answer me this honestly. If you only do things that you can afford, how can you ever level up? Every investment that you make, every trip that you make, anytime you're going to get a job, if you only do things that you can afford, how can you level up? Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me. I want y'all to tell me the answer. I don't want to answer the question. If you only do things that you can afford, how do you level up then? How do you ever get to the next level? Because when I was broke and I have no money and I had to go get a job, I damn near had to borrow money to go get a suit for the interview. I had to be two weeks in the hole. So I'm not the whole time I'm working, I'm not going to get paid for two weeks. So I can't afford that. I, I just want to be real. I can't afford that. But guess what? I'm still going to go. <laughs> I'm still going to go. I'm going to borrow. I'm going to borrow money to be able to get through. I'm going to get rides until I can buy a car. I want y'all to think about it. Because we do things that we can't afford all the time because we have to. There is no way to level up if you only do things that you can afford. So when people even tell me, hey, yo, Mitch, I want to get into your program. I'm dying to learn. And I want to really be at a level up, but I can't afford that. Okay, cool. So what else is new? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So everybody who went to college and went on a full pail and they got financial aid, could you afford that school, that, that, that college tuition? Because some of y'all are still paying it today and y'all got out of school 10 years ago. Could you afford that? When you went to college, when you went to trade school to learn how to be a mechanic, when you went to go learn how to do body work, could you afford that money? So when people tell me that, I'm like, why are you even telling me that? What else is new? If you only do things you can afford, how do you level up? The answer is you don't. You don't level up. The second thing is, it's either you want it or you don't. There should be nothing, like E.T. talked about this. You want to be more successful than you want to breathe. But a lot of people don't get that analogy. A lot of people don't get that analogy. It's either you want it so bad, nothing is going to stop me at all. Money ain't going to stop me. Me having a kid or me being a single parent is not going to stop me. This habit that I got to break me, I got a drinking problem. It ain't going to stop me. I'm not drinking no more. This smoking, I'm not going to do it no more. This, this gambling, I'm not going to do it no more. It's either you want it or you don't. It don't matter the dollar amount. It don't matter the dollar amount. I want this information. That's the same thing. I had to pay $20,000 to learn about ClickFunnels and go high level. I learned about them. I've been making millions ever since. It cost me $20,000. I wanted the information. And, 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 and less, I'm just like y'all. I wish to God it was cheaper. I wish it was more free. I wish it, it, it cost less. But it didn't. It cost me $20,000. And I wanted the information. I know that person had the information and they had the results. They had a $10 million ClickFunnels plaque right behind them. They got the proof in the pudding. They got the social proof. They said the information cost $20,000. I paid it. Now I make millions of dollars every year. I got my own plaques. I got my own ClickFunnels plaques. Three of them. Three of them. And it wasn't going to come for me getting it for free. I was trying to YouTube it. I'm just like y'all. I've been YouTube and Googling shit since I was motherfucking. As soon as Google came out, I started trying to Google ways to make money and Google things I can do. I was out here trying to buy vending machines, ATMs. And guess what? I didn't spend no money for somebody to teach me on that shit. So guess how much money I made? I didn't spend no money for nobody to teach me how to do it. And guess how much money I made with them vending machines, with them candy machines and gumball machines I was trying to invest in because you know why I was trying to invest in those businesses? Because they seemed like they were affordable for me to start. You know why I was trying to get into those businesses? Because they seemed like I, it was affordable for me to start. I want y'all to let that sink in. And then as soon as I got around people that was really making money, I started asking them questions. Listen, I started hanging around millionaires. 
I started hanging around people who make it seven, eight figures, and I started asking them questions. I said, yo, so how y'all learn how to do this? And they say just like this, oh yeah, my mentor. And then I go over to this mentor. Um, I go over to this millionaire. I say, yo, how you learn how to do what you're doing, bro? You're making a lot of money. You're real successful. Oh, yeah, my mentor taught me. Hey, yo, bro, how you learn how to um do what you're doing, bro? You're a mortgage broker. What you do? Oh, yeah, yeah, my mentor taught me how to do it. And then I... And then I went to my broke friends. And I asked them the same thing. How you learn how to be broke like this? <laughs> that shit is crazy. How you learn how to live check to check like this? How you learn how to go to the club and, and split a section with eight niggas like this? How you learn how to be on food stamps like this and brag about it? How you learn how to be on unemployment and just and finesse the system like that? That shit was crazy. I had a revelation. I got me a mentor and I turned up and, that, and, that, and it was over since then. It was over since then. It was over. I paid 70 G's. I paid 70,000. I didn't have the 70,000. I couldn't afford it. Listen to me. I paid 70,000. I couldn't afford it. I didn't have the money to pay it. I financed it. Two weeks later, literally seven plus seven, 14 days later, I made $500,000 in one day. I've been having mentors ever since. I've been having mentors ever since. So I don't know about y'all, but you can do it the, the way you always do it, which is by yourself, or you can do it learning from somebody, and I'm going to learn. So with that being said, again, I got three more positions left in my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. The group mentorship is always open. I got payment plans. Don't let it stop you from joining if you don't got all the money. I want to work with the people who actually want to get help. That is what I'm in the business of doing. My business is a coaching business that helps other people make money. If you don't make money, my business fails. It is delegitimized. That's why I can get on live every day, freely speak about these programs that I have, and you're not going to hear not one complaint because I am good at what I do because I show you how to do the fundamentals and lay it up off the backboard. If you want to lay it up off the backboard and continue to collect two points every time you hit a bucket, go ahead and DM me, fish, so I can teach you how to fish. I'm out. I'll talk to y'all later, man. Peace.